Okay, everyone, <clears throat> I wanted to make a short video real quick concerning the subject about a Christian sinning, okay? Now, whenever you hear, hear a person, okay, whenever a Christian sins right, uh, we know when we sin, all right? We, we because our born-again spirits don't agree with the sin, okay? Our flesh may be enticed by it. But when you get down to it, to the heart of the issue, we really, that's not, we don't get enjoyment within the deep, deepest part of us in that, okay? The Bible says sins and, you know, fun for a season, okay? But then that wears off, okay? Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, that's not who you are anymore. You're a child of God that doesn't thrive off of sin, that doesn't, your, your new born again spirit doesn't agree with sin. Okay. Even though your flesh may be enticed by it, that does not mean that that's who you are. Like I've heard this put this way, you're not the sum total of your, you know, of your actions. You know, we're not defined by what we do. We're defined by what our faith is in, which is Christ. We're defined by Christ. Okay. But when a Christian sins, most of the time when they don't understand. And they think, and they hear people say, God's mad at you. God's upset with you. Your fellowship is broken off. You need to restore something. You need to jump into action to start performing works to patch this back up. Okay? Because you're out of fellowship because you sinned. Okay? That makes the Christian scared. Okay? That makes the Christian try to perform something. Try to start working by performance to perform better. Okay, that's a performance path, rabbit trail. Okay, and that's not what we're all about. That's not what the Christian life's about. The Christian life is about every time you make mistakes, every time you sin, you thank God through Jesus Christ that that sin is not getting accounted against you, and you realize that Christ has already seen uh, that sin in the future and has forgiven that. Okay, because you've been forgiven for all your sins. See, because nine times out of ten when we sin, when we make mistakes, the hardest thing to get over most of the time is us beating ourselves up. We're mad at ourselves, okay? Okay, we feel guilty, shameful, okay? But when we're angry at ourselves, man, why did I do that? I can't believe I did that, you know? And that's the hardest thing to get over is that pride that we hold. That, like, oh, we'll never be able to forgive ourselves and start trying to chasten ourselves, okay? Like, I hear people throughout the world setting themselves on fire and chastening themselves, you know, whipping themselves because they deserve it after all they sin. And that's the, that's the epitome of pride. They try to act like they're being humble, but they're not being humble. They're being prideful, okay? Because Christ took our beating, all right? If you wanted to be humble, you, you believe upon Christ and you accept His reconciliation and realize He's taking your punishment, Okay, but it's not humble to beat yourself up. It is not humble to call yourself a piece of crap. Because that's not who you are. I don't care what you're doing in this life. I don't care what you're struggling with. You are not. If you're a child of God, you are not okay, a piece of crap. You are not a wicked, dirty, dirty, dirty piece of filth. That's not who you really are. Okay, The sin, the sin infection inside of you is what is the dirty parasite... Uh, you know, horrible, dirty thing, okay, wicked thing, but that's not you though, okay, that's not you, all right, and when you start feeling these feelings as soon as you sin, you know, if you're born again child of God, you're not going to agree with the sin deep within yourself, okay, that's the reason, there's a reason the Bible says the sin's fun for a season, because yeah, it might be fun to, what's that, what that is saying is it's fun to you for a certain period of time, but not to you, uh, who you really are it's it's enticed your flesh is enticed by the sin for a season okay and then it starts to wear off see because here's the deal about sin it deceives you sin deceives you it makes you think you want it but when you when you get it or when you do it and perform it you realize that no you really did not want that deep within inside of you the flesh part of you is enticed by it and says hey that looks appetizing i'll try that and then you realize it's just death after that and then you feel disgrace you feel upset you feel disgusted with yourself okay because sin does not agree with your born again spirit okay that's how sneaky and destructive sin is okay it latches on to the fleshly part of you 
okay? Because your flesh is enticed by it. And then at the end of the day, you're feeling left miserable after it because it doesn't agree with your born-again spirit. It makes you think you want it deep within yourself, but you do not if you're a born-again child of God. Now, unsaved people, yes. Every aspect of them wants sin, and they are enjoying sin, and they love it. They can't get enough of it. Yeah, there might be an aspect of an unborn-again person being miserable, but they're only miserable because they're dead in sins. But when they do sin, they don't have the new heart. They don't have the born-again spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them. Okay. They don't have that inner life of Christ that d rejects that rejects the sin that doesn't agree with the sin, okay? But the number one thing to know, okay, to keep, you know, the, we're always going to have negative feelings and weird feelings, okay, because that's just the way us human beings are. Because sin has infected, you know, sin can mess with our feelings and mess with everything, okay? The way to understand it is to not... First, first and foremost, realize that you are not what you do, okay? And that's not who you are. When you make, you know, a wicked choice or a bad choice, you know, if you sin, that's not who you are, okay? Deep down, deep, deep, deep down inside of you, that's not what you really want. But sin deceives you into thinking you like it, okay? Through the flesh part of you, okay? That's why we feel guilty when we sin. That's why we feel ashamed. That's why, you know, we feel like, oh, God's mad at us. Okay, then we automatically think God is mad at us. Okay, it's nine times out of ten. Or nine, ten times out of ten. It's, you know, it's God is not mad at you. It's you are mad at you. And you're saying that's God. It's not you. It's not God. When you sin, the only, you, you get mad at you because you can't believe, I mean, I can't believe I did that. Okay. But that is not God being mad at you. He accepts you. You are accepted in the Beloved in every way, shape, and form. Okay? When you sin, that doesn't mean that God turns His back and you're out of fellowship. You, you sin while you are in fellowship with the Lord because He is one with you. Because your sins are forgiven. Listen, everybody. Jesus Christ walking with sinners, eating with sinners, okay, is a, is a type and a picture of how a born again Christian can sin in the presence of God and not be and, and and not be blown away and disintegrated of God's holiness okay because you have been forgiven you need to understand this you sin in fellowship with the Lord you don't fall out of fellowship or relationship with the Lord once you sin because your sins he remembers no more it's just like Christ walking with sinners them sinning amongst him him going okay him going around sinners and them doing what not, okay? Here's the deal. It's because of grace, all right? That we are not blown away by the Lord's, you know, disintegrated into thin air, okay? Because our sins have been forgiven and we are resurrected with Christ, with the resurrection life of Christ, okay? But Jesus walking with sinners, talking with sinners, okay? It shows that you, <laughs> you don't lose fellowship with the Lord when you make mistakes and sin. Okay? And that should show you how loving the Lord is. He doesn't turn his back on you when you sin. Okay, guys? But I want to end this video. Uh, I love each and every one of you guys. I just want everybody to know, listen, and when you start to understand these, you know, these simple, like, awesome truths about your relationship with the Lord, I mean, it gets you down the path of if you're struggling with anything repetitively or anything like that you can start to come down to where you start to get some freedom from that okay once you realize God's not mad at you okay once you realize you don't just wall around the mud and just well I guess this, this is the way I am this is never going to change I'm never going to get over this certain type of sin is going to rule my life forever no it's not see the reason it is is because that's the outlook you have on it you have heard from somebody that says, well, that's just what you are at the end of the day. You have a wicked, wicked heart, and you'll never be able to get over it. You might be able to get some kind of uh, victory every now and then, but you'll never have. You know, look, that's a load of bull crap, okay? You don't have a wicked heart. You have a new heart, okay? And a reason, one of the biggest reasons why you're still in locked in a certain, you know, repetitive sin or anything is, is dominating you because of the belief, the wrong belief you have about it in the first place. 
the belief you have is set to fail because you're saying that well this is just who I am at the end of the day I might as well just you know just give up or just you know not try anything else it's just on you know that's a set to fail belief system okay the way that God made salvation okay it's a foolproof system that is set in such a way to give you victory not only victory through everlasting life once you die and get out of this body but victory in this life too you can have victory in this life too now I'm not what well, I'm not I'm not saying that you can have perfection in the flesh but I am saying that you can get to a point to where you are not beaten down and a slave to sin okay because the Bible says you know when you're saved you're not a, you're no longer a slave to sin okay but God bless everybody I'm on my way to work I'm gonna have to get off here uh, I love each and every one of you guys. Uh, you, everybody have a good day. God bless everyone.